I'm here today with the president of Smith College, Kathleen McCartney. Thanks very much for being here. It's great to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Kathleen, I understand that you are the first member of your family to have gone to college. That's right. What was that experience like for you? Well, I, I grew up in Medford, Massachusetts, um, which is a good place to grow up in if, because Tufts University is there. And uh, lived at home and uh, didn't have the best college counseling, didn't know enough to apply to live there, but lived at home. Walked up the hill to Tufts every day and got an amazing education. I'm really proud to tell you that I've been a Tufts trustee, which feels mm -hmm. like completing a circle of some kind. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the best thing that happened to me at Tufts was um, having an amazing woman mentor mm -hmm. who um, convinced me that I needed to uh, enroll in a Ph.D. program in developmental psychology. I'm quite certain I never would have done that without her encouragement. How did she convince you to do that? You know, I this is a funny story really, but I was taking child development with her and um, she asked us all to attend a colloquium that afternoon. I had no idea what a colloquium was, but a professor said to me that I should do it, so I did. I was the only student in the class of 60 that went and she just started to take special interest in me. I worked in her research lab uh, and just she was just an amazing mentor for mm -hmm. me and I think helped me realize a potential in myself to actually be a professor. It's hard when you're 20 years old to think about, well, maybe I could be a professor, especially you know, when you come from a working class family. But mm -hmm. It was gradual, but I, I remember she took a lot of time helping me even select the uh, colleges and universities I would apply to. Hmm. How did that experience affect the kind of college leader you eventually became, and what lessons did you draw from it? Well, I think that um, I've always been interested in, as a researcher in, uh, in children in poverty. And uh, most of my research has been on uh, preschool education, child care, that sort of thing. So there's no doubt in my mind that um, a concern for equity based on my own personal experiences led to that research topic. And um, keeping Smith accessible and affordable is definitely a main goal that I have going mm -hmm. forward. And fortunately for me, it's, that's also a long-standing commitment of Smith's. Mm -hmm. What do you think Smith College offers a student like you once were? I, I think that colleges have gotten um, so much better at supporting uh, low-income students. And I'll, j I'll just give you an example of the range of ways. I mean, we have an orientation for first-generation students. I attended that last year. We, we all cried together, sharing our experiences. We have special mentoring programs for first-generation students so that they can uh, develop those kinds of close working relationships with faculty that happen for me organically. We have um, praxis experiences, summer internship experiences, where um, we will actually pay for a low-income student to work at a, well, at a place like a Chronicle. Suppose they were interested in journalism. We might actually support a, a summer experience for them there, counseling services, just a range of things that really weren't available for me. And I think the goal really is to provide the kind of mentoring and support so that they can see themselves doing whatever they want to do. Previously in your career, you were dean of the Harvard Graduate mm -hmm. School of Education at a large, decentralized yes. research university. Now you're at a small, private, liberal arts women's college. What's been the most challenging aspect of that transition for you? I don't know that it's been challenging. Um, when you, you know, Harvard's so decentralized mm -hmm. that when you're a dean of one of the professional schools, it might be the law school or the Kennedy School of Government or the School of Education, I think the deans there sometimes say it's like running a small college because you have your own library, your own development team, your own finance team. So in many ways I thought it was really good preparation uh, for Smith. Uh, but I think, you know, moves are challenging. I mean, they're, they're transitions in every way. I mean, uh, different culture to become accustomed to and to work within, uh, different team, different geography, the need to build new friendships. But that's exciting, too. I think it's fun to be on the learning curve, and I've certainly been on the learning curve since last July. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you are a trustee at Tufts. Um, what kind of perspective does that give you into the operation of a, a college or university, and are there things that you want trustees to know about the challenges of being a president? Well, uh, technically I'm a trustee emerita, so I've, I've, I have served, but um, 
I, I think that was also an enormously important experience for me with respect to um, knowing how to do the job. I got very close to Larry Bacow and then Tony Monaco. In fact, I was on the search committee that hired Tony Monaco, the current president. But I think one of the things I really learned to appreciate uh, from being on both sides is, uh, the, you know, the difference between governance and management. So trustees sometimes want to manage, but we really need to let the team on the ground manage. Our job is to really uh, govern and um, make suggestions, of course. It's hard not to make suggestions, if, especially for the academics like me who, who are on the board, but to really respect the people on the ground. So you've been in office, what, about 10 months now? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, what has surprised you about the job? You know, a lot of people have asked me that, and uh, it really <laughs> is the opportunity to work with the students at Smith. Um, they are just um, a special group who really love their college president. I don't know how else to say it. But when my daughters came for the inauguration, my daughters are 28 and 31, and they saw all these Smithies taking you know, selfies with me, and there was a dance for me, and so on. Um, my daughters, who had gone to co-ed, liberal arts institutions, Middlebury and Wesleyan, they were really surprised. They just didn't have that kind of relationship with the college president. Um, so that's been the biggest surprise. I, I wouldn't think they would care about hanging out with a middle-aged college president at a basketball game, but it turns out they do. So as a developmental psychologist, that's wonderful to, for me. I really enjoy spending time with, with young people. What's the most challenging part of the job for you? You know, that's easy. It's the schedule. It is not the work. People keep saying, isn't this hard or making decisions hard? It's not. The schedule can get unwieldy, so that's the hardest part of the job. And uh, maybe that's okay the first year, but I'm, I'm going to try to tame the schedule a little bit next year. So uh, you've mentioned that you're a developmental psycholo psychologist. Yes. Uh, I imagine that would be great preparation for a presidency. <laughs> I think it is, and some people have joked with me. I once <laughs> ran the lab school at the University of New Hampshire, which was a school you know, for preschoolers. So if, if you can run a school for preschoolers, you can probably run just about anything. <laughs> great. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Kathy, for being here today. This My has pleasure. Been very fun.